Oh, what's up everybody? I'm Matt Gary, and on this episode of Coding with the Force, I'm gonna show you how to use DML mocking in your test classes. All right, guys, so just like with every other video I do, I first wanna to explain to you why you would care to do DML mocking with your tests. Um, now I know some developers hate writing tests, so before I even get into DML mocking, let me first tell you, um, if you have that attitude towards testing, you should change that attitude like immediately. Let me tell you, I was uh, not keen on testing for a long time until I figured out that if you write tests and you write them well, you write them from the beginning, um, it really allows you a lot of freedom as a developer. So you're going to uh, be able to refactor your code uh, easier, you're going to be able to add additional stuff to your code, additional functionality, all that kind of stuff, a lot easier if you have tests that you can trust um, because you're going to accidentally release bugs into your code a lot less frequently, which means that you are going to gain the trust of all the business people that rely on you to do the code. Um, anyway, long story short, you don't like testing change it Ch change the attitude <laughs> I know it can be hard but it is well worth it if you do um, anyway back on topic why do we care about mocking in um, our test classes well the first uh, of the two main reasons is the one that's popular enough I feel like uh, that exists on the internet and <laughs> is talked about enough in Salesforce and other places is um, DML mocking. Um, it can save you a lot of time on your test run. So, uh, you know, you may be lucky enough, or maybe if you're me, I would consider you unlucky, to live in a co uh, in a in a world where there's not very many there's not very much code in your org. So your um, test runs don't take very long at all to do. So you might be looking at only 15 minutes to deploy from. Uh, you know, into production or something whenever you add some new code. But it's not impossible that your org will eventually grow um, to the point where it takes six hours to run all your tests. And nobody wants to wait six hours to deploy their code to production. So how do you fix that problem and still test? Um, DML, or, you know, mocking is the solution there. Um, if you didn't know, DML transactions take the longest amount of time, uh, typically, when your code executes. So if you can cut that out, along with a lot of other things like validation rules and process builders running, et cetera, et cetera, then um, you know, you're know you gonna save yourself a ton of time with your test. Um, the second thing is that it allows your uh, or the second reason why you'd want to do mocking is it allows you to kind of test your code at a finer level of granularity. Um, and it, it allows your test to be a lot more, or a lot less uh, brittle, I think is the term everybody uses. But basically it makes it so that it's not as easy to break your tests. Um, so say theoretically you have a, a um, class that, you know, I don't know. Maybe the class is a service class that makes updates to your opportunities or something. And that class also calls um, several other helper classes to maybe query for the opportunities that it needs to update or um, insert or, or, you know, potentially a class to actually update the <clears throat> opportunities or something along those lines. Well, um, you really, when you're writing the, the test for that class, you, you'll probably want to write a unit test where it really just tests the logic of the code housed within that class and not all the other stuff that exists that it, you know, it might, that code might interact with. So you just want to test, okay, um, does my code in this method actually operate as I intended it to? as opposed to does this method and all other, or sorry, does this class and all other classes it interacts with um, 
do what I uh, what I expect them to do. So it really allows you to, you know, kind of hone your testing in to the true functionality of that specific class instead of the functionality of that class in every other class that it interacts with. So, um, yeah. And uh, so those are the two major things. There's a handful of other smaller benefits that you might gain here and there depending on what you're mocking, um, but those are the main things. Uh, and I don't want to overcomplicate stuff. So <clears throat> that's kind of the goal of this channel, hopefully, is to make complex things seem a little less complicated. All right, so what is mocking and how do we actually leverage mocking in Apex? Um, mocking, in, in its simplest form, is literally just faking something. So uh, in our instance, we're going to fake some Apex classes that our other Apex class depends on to be able to do its job. So, mocking is literally just creating a fake version of something. That's it. It's uh, literally the same idea. If you've ever had to do integration work in Salesforce and you've created a test class for that integration work, you may have created what's called an HTTP callout mock. Um, you're doing the exact same thing here, except for in this instance, instead of creating a fake case, or sorry, uh, a fake, sorry, a fake uh return response from you know whatever place you're calling out to for your integration you're creating a fake instance of a class that your class calls at some point in time okay cool so mocking is just faking how do we actually implement mocking in our um, test classes so I've got this um, uh, case service class that is not quite set up right. For instance, if this was a service class, this should be static and a bunch of other rules, but let's not worry about it for now. Theoretically, this is a case service class. Um, <clears throat> we won't worry about anything else. Uh, and there's a very important thing that we have to do to be able to utilize mocking in our tests, and that is what's called dependency injection. And that's a big, scary developer term that I feel like even most developers are scared away by. Um, but really, it's a very simple concept and a very simple thing to do. Uh, and it's not all that scary at all. So basically, all dependency injection means is that this case service class depends on this query, a query cases class and this DML cases class to be able to operate as expected. Now, what dependency injection means is that instead of us just going up here and saying, uh, you know, straight up declaring this as new query cases or something, which you could certainly do, instead, either through the use of a constructor, so this is a constructor here, or through the, uh, the use of a setter on your class, you are injecting or passing your uh, classes that this class depends on. So you're using dependency injection to inject these dependencies into your Apex class. Pretty simple. And you're really just passing the parameters through a constructor or a setter method to initialize these classes that this case service class relies on to get its job done. That's it. You do need to implement dependency injection in your classes to be able to pass fake versions of your classes for your tests. Um, if you're not already doing that, don't freak out. It's not the end of the world. It's pretty easy to implement this. So to make sure that nothing else, you know, in your code uh, for this case service class, theoretically, uh, was you know changed up all that much. Basically, what you can do is create a no argument constructor called case service, and have it call this private constructor that your test will call because it's test visible, which means that your tests will be able to call this private constructor, and have it initialize these um, 
classes. So really it's it's not super complicated to add if you don't already have it. Um, if you don't already do dependency injection and dependency injection is really not that scary. It's literally just passing in other classes that your code depends on to keep it real simple. Okay, so now that we know what mocking is, um, what you need at a base class level to be able to do mocking, so dependency injection. Now, how do we actually do mocking in our code? So over here, I've got this um, case service test class, and I just do want to say that normally I wouldn't put an underscore here. <laughs> this is completely off topic, but I wouldn't normally put an underscore here, but for some reason, Salesforce was freaking out when I just did regular case service, and it just died on me, so I put an underscore. Anyway, not relevant. Let's try to stay on topic. Um, okay, so how do we actually do mocking in our test class now that we know what we need to do in our regular tests? Um, what we're going to do is create fake instances of objects, and we're going to use a mocking framework that is built on the Apex Stub API to be able to create mock instances and mock data to return to your class. And that might be a little confusing at first, but let me tell you, it's really not that hard. And I'm going to break it down for you here in just a minute. Um, all right, so to create my fake data, I have this mock s object builder class. And basically what this class does uh, is not all that important to you. It was created by someone I was fortunate enough to work with. Um, I've extended it a little bit for my own purposes, but for the most part, he did all the heavy lifting and I just got to leverage it. So this is a very simple class, that, um, this mock s object builder class. Basically, it uses what's called the builder pattern, which is not important um, at this moment in time. So don't freak out if you don't know what that is to allow you to create um, objects from JSON, basically. <clears throat> so basically what happens is you create this mock s object builder class. Uh, you um, w ask it to set the ID if you want it to have an ID for your object. You call this method set field to set the various values, uh, field values that you might want to set and then you call a build method to take the JSON that you have basically generated in your um, mock s object builder object and build a s object rest record that you can uh, turn into a case or whatever object that you think you need. So the next thing I do here I kind of need to explain first. I haven't really gone over these other classes. So um, the case service class uh, depends on the query cases and the DML cases class. So the DML cases class is here. Basically, it just updates my cases and the query cases uh, literally just queries cases and takes a set of case IDs. I have to generate a fake return response for both of these um, classes for my mock class anyway. Um, so if I come back here to, to my case service test, what I've done is I've put uh, this fake case that I've made into a list of cases, which I will then later, and we'll go over this, uh, add as a return value for um, the basically a fake response from that uh, update cases method within my DML cases class, as well as a uh, fake return response for my query cases class in the select cases method. Uh, then the second thing I've done here is just create a list or a set of um, case IDs so that I can pass those case IDs to my do case updates method, the method in case service that I am actually testing. So uh, this guy right here. This is not important. I'm just declaring the names of my methods that I'm going to be calling. So for the query cases, that is select cases. Select cases. For the DML method, that is update cases. Update cases. 
cool so those are the names of my methods and my classes that my service case service class is dependent on that I'm going to be calling um, and next you use a mock uh, a mocking framework that is built on the apex stub API now I say all that because you can create you can get a um, mocking class that was built before the stub API existed and um, it's not really in your best interest to do so because that's not great there are ones that still exist out there so make sure that if you get a mock framework from github or wherever else that it uses the stub API and not the old junk that you used to have to do that takes quite a bit longer to deal with so um, the most popular mock framework out there is the financial force library or FFlib apex mocks framework I'm not using that here because I feel like it's over I mean it, it's not like it's over complicated but it, it makes it harder to understand what I'm going to try to show you here so there's nothing wrong with using um, apex mocks it's a great framework but universal mocker is a lot easier to understand it's a lot easier to implement and it's a lot easier to teach off of <clears throat> Um, without a whole bunch of background so um, I am using this universal mock art library which was created by not me but someone called uh, Siraj Pillai no idea if I got that right so sorry Siraj or however you may or may not say your name um, but uh, he was kind enough to build this and put it out on the uh, internet on github uh, and I will provide a link to this if you want to do this so basically I'm using his mocker framework and it has a lot of documentation on it to create a fake instance of my case DML method so my basically my DML cases method so basically what I'm doing here is I'm saying okay let's initialize a new version or a new um, universal mocker <coughs> um, object and mock so we're gonna create a fake instance of our DML cases class that's it then we're going to say okay um, for this DML uh, DML cases class our fake version of this class when we call the update cases method with the parameter type of list case dot you know basically a list of cases so with a parameter type that is a list of cases I know this is confusing but just kind of ignore this and only care about what this is right here so whenever we call our DML cases class, um, our DML cases <clears throat> update cases method with a parameter of a list of cases, then we need to return our returned cases, which is our faked cases that we made up here. Okay. And then what we do after we've after we've set up all of this like all of the stuff that we need it to return or do um, so after we've determined all of the fake outcomes uh, essentially for our um, DML cases class then what we'll do is we'll say we'll initialize a new version of the actual DML case class but we'll initialize it with our you know universal mocker initialization so that case DML mock and create a stub so we're saying hey DML cases create a fake version of yourself um, to kind of pass around more or less I, I don't know a good way to explain it other than this is basically saying this DML cases class is equal to the fake version of itself that we just declared up here hopefully that makes sense that's the easiest way I can think of then I'm literally doing the exact same thing down here for our um, query cases method I'm saying okay let's create a mock version of that query cases class and when we call the uh, select cases method with a parameter of uh, a set of IDs then return our returned cases so we also just want to um, return that returned cases again I kept this very simple um, to hopefully make it as easily digestible as I could okay so then uh, we're actually going to do our testing so now that we've created the fake versions of our classes 
um, we're going to actually do the testing for our class. And basically what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, let's initialize a new version of case service and let's pass case service our, uh, our fake version of case queries and our fake version of case DML. And then let's um, call the case service do case updates method, which is uh, this guy. So if we go back over to our case services class, we call this do case updates method, which will do a case query to select cases and uh, do another or call the DML or sorry the query cases class to select our cases and then it will call the um, DML class uh, update cases method to actually update our cases Ooh, just got a phone call threw me off there okay so all right so we're calling this class and or sorry we're calling this method in the class and um, it's obviously not calling those real classes anymore. It's going to get the return value that we set up here when we created these fake classes that we passed to case service and return them. So um, it is important, obviously, that you take the time to figure out what is appropriate for you um, for you to have returned in certain instances. Uh, as a developer, you should know that if you develop the code or you're reading the code and now just writing the test for it, you should probably know what it should theoretically return. Um, and then uh, the other nice thing that this, you know, mocking allows you to do is do a number of asserts that it, it would be really hard for you to do otherwise uh, or quite, quite a bit more complicated anyway. So... <clears throat> I have this case DML mock that I initialized up here, and obviously I passed that fake um, case DML in when we started testing our case service class. And we said, um, you know, basically what we're saying here is assert that this method, case DML method, uh, update cases with the parameter type of a list of cases, was called only once. Um, and then the same thing for this case query method. Uh, make sure that it was called only once. And uh, that's kind of kind of cool in my opinion. It's a little more complicated to do that without this, um, without mocking. You can certainly do it, but it's a little more challenging. Uh, you can also say, you know, make sure that it was called exactly two times or more than two times or less than two times or all of these other things. And there's a handful of other very useful um, things that you can assert um, through mocking that would be a little more complicated otherwise. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is really uh, just a very simple implementation of mocking. Uh, but this is, you know, uh, this is really all it is. You just set up a fake version of your classes that your other class depends on, and you pass it in. Um, <clears throat> now, now that we kind of understand what mocking is and how to set it up and all that kind of stuff, um, how do you actually do DML mocking? Which uh, that is very important. You might be looking at this and saying, this is a very simple example. And indeed it is a simple example that already assumes a lot of things. Um, you might have a class, for instance, um, that has a method that says, you know, something like public void uh, find a case or something. And in find a case, you do an inline query where you say a list case, case, cases equals, and then you do a query right there. In this instance, where you've done these inline queries, right within your, you know, service layer logic or whatever, or, you know, right within your class, this becomes really hard to do DML mocking. Um, and you lose a lot of benefits of mocking. So <clears throat> it is important that you separate out your logic in ways that allow you to separate your kind of DML action. So 
that's kind of hard to maybe envision, but think about it this way. Um, in your code, you're always doing DML statements. Uh, you could have thousands of places in your code where you're doing DML statements. Alternatively, you could create a utility class that um, you just called from those thousands of places and that one utility class housed all of that um, DML logic. So your inserts, your updates, your upserts, your whatever else. Okay, and then you your class could become dependent on that and you could inject that fake, that, um, fake class and when you're uh, when you're doing your DML or you know you're mocking in your test uh, classes um, so that I mean that serves a bunch of uh, several different benefits number one you can do uh, DML mocking uh, pretty easily in your test classes and number two you only have one point in your code base where you need to actually update your insert logic with you know whatever maybe you have a new way to handle errors or you have a new way to check for permissions or whatever else instead of having to update that in a thousand different places you only update it in one place now in one utility class uh, same thing for querying obviously uh, there's no way to really fake querying if all of your classes do you know querying in line with every single method um, alternatively if you have classes for each of your objects um, that handle querying for you, so this is what's called the uh, selector layer of Salesforce, if you're familiar with that, then you'll be able to pass in that dependency through dependency injection to do your querying. So much like I have here, and I kind of set it up this way intentionally, because you do need to have these layers of separation to be able to pass um, in your dependent classes that do all of these DML actions for you. If every single one of your classes is doing DML right in it and you can't just pass a dependency that does that DML operation for you, well, you're going to have a lot of trouble, you know, getting a lot of benefit out of the DML mocking aspect of this. So you do ideally need to implement what is called separations of concerns within your uh, Salesforce org and implement the uh, different layers within se uh, separation of concerns so that's the service layer the domain layer and the selector layer um, if you're not familiar with that don't freak out it's not the end of the world number one I will do a video over it very soon to kind of give you an easy way to digest all that and number two um, it doesn't really have to be ultra complicated um, you can basically just separate out your logic into these kind of utility classes that help you do your job, you know, help, help you write your code a little easier and, um, not have, you know, you're not writing the same query over and over and over and over in a bunch of different places and you're not writing DML statements with error handling in a whole bunch of different places. You just have them in these one centralized locations that all of your other classes are dependent on then you can inject them as dependencies and fake the DML and all that kind of stuff. So um, if you're interested, uh, I, I'm i not going to run this right now because I feel like I'm already over uh, my time that I wanted to do this by quite a bit. But I did run this mock uh, class uh, and then a regular non-mock class three different times. So I did uh, test this case service class through mocking. And then I did this case service class um, without mocking, so with real DML inserts. And this is on a uh, object, the cases object in my personal developer org that does not have a trigger. Uh, it doesn't have process builders, flows, blah, 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 validation rules, anything else. All of which would be bypassed by mocking uh, your DML statements. And with a single case update, I saved at minimum... 34% of my time and at maximum 65% of my time so uh, it ranged <clears throat> from this being 65% faster or sorry 33% faster to 65% faster so this is just with a single case without very many things on it and the reason that there's a range there if you didn't know is because Salesforce is you know can be a little slower or a little faster for DML 
and just in general processing your requests uh, on the platform. <clears throat> so there's not ever gonna it's not ever gonna say you know always take 66 milliseconds to operate. It could take 66 milliseconds one run. It could take 90 milliseconds the next run. Blah blah blah. It's based on resources and all that kind of stuff. So this is quite a bit faster, um, and you can imagine how much faster mocking gets if you start in incorporating things like validation rules and triggers and process builders and blah blah blah, all things that you would bypass if you don't actually insert a case or you don't actually update a case and you don't actually query for a case or something like that. So, um, yes, that's it. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, if it wasn't, please ask me questions. Hopefully I can help and clarify some things. Um, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe. I do Salesforce videos at least once a week, typically. Um, and, um, you know, check out the Patreon if you want some cool coding with the force stuff, uh, and to support me continuing to do these videos, <laughs> you know, which I don't really make any money on, which is perfectly fine because I just like making them. Uh, anyway, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you watching, and uh, I'll see you all next time.